Okay, so we're recording now. Um, just maybe before we start, I would like to just from just maybe raise a hand if if you're already working, just maybe put a thumbs up if you're currently working somewhere else. Anyone? Okay, see Caleb. No one else. You're not on. Okay, that's great. One more. Okay, that's great. All right. Um, okay, I see that's a lot of you. Um, for the others, okay, great. Um, it's good to. It's good to get uh, your reactions. So today, uh, what we have prepared for you is um, how to craft uh, very good CVs, especially if we, for those who are looking for work or if not looking for work, how can you improve your current um, CV that you have? As you all know, um, the current trends in AI and especially in the human resource industry, a lot of HR are using um, the ATS machines to scan or software to scan uh, CVs. So how exactly can you improve the current CV that you have to fit or to, yeah, to go in line with the, yeah, to go in line with the ATS software is. Um, so yeah, we'll get started. So maybe just a brief introduction about a CV, which I think everyone knows, but it's, it's basically a marketing piece for yourself. So you as yourself are a brand, regardless of the service you're offering, the background that you studied, what you're currently doing, you yourself are a brand and how exactly do you um, sell that image to um, to everyone else? So even if it's maybe you're still working and you want to get a, a project somewhere and you're required to have a CV, like this, Is week zero selection week? Um, I'm I'm not so sure, but I will just ask my kid and then I'll get back to you. Uh, but yes, I think it is. Uh, but in case of any something that's not clear, you can use the Slack channel to ask that to ask that question specifically. Um, okay, so yeah, a CV is a marketing piece that should highlight your strong points, the roles and achievements and the responsibilities that you have done in your previous workplace on a certain project. Um, a CV should highlight all of this. And basically it normally has um, your education, like your background and your professional experience, your skills, and also some of the projects that you've done. And if you've not done any projects, um, maybe, for example, consider with Zero's project as one of the projects that you could also add on your CVs. So the main purpose of a CV is for you to get an interview for a job. So, um, it's very important to be very clear about um, the value that you create and make sure that the one who reads your CV views you as someone who is very valuable. So, yeah, a lot of people, normally when roles are open, you get so many uh, people applying for a certain job, but only those, a few of them are normally selected. And this is because, um, yeah, so it's it's because of how the no one has uh, the hiring manager has not met anyone uh, yet, 
but it's your CV that should stand out and should be able to convince the hiring manager to get you an interview to get to know you more. Um, so that's why it should really contain every strong point about yourself and the value that you've done or created previously. And also there's something about how exactly do you write or craft the value that you've done for a certain project. Um, I think we're also going to cover that. So yeah, so by writing an effective CV, the goal is to just ensure it satisfies two audiences. So the first one is the humans, and that means it should be very clear and um, attractive. That means well formatted and also inform exactly what it needs to inform. inform. And the other thing is the machines. We've also talked about how currently CVs are subjected to automated scanning. And so how exactly do you tailor your own CV to be able to um, to pass through these machines? And one of the things or tips that I can say is um, just getting to first understand how exactly do these machines work in the first place, uh, not necessarily machines or softwares. Um, so. I know you're all learning things about machine learning and uh, AI, and you're probably aware that if you put that, uh, how, how exactly the machines work is by looking at certain keywords or topics or, yeah, certain keywords or topics that are in your CV, and then they try to relate them to um, what's, on the job description and then uh, creates a certain output uh, according to how exactly does your CV match the job descriptions. So that's why it's always important to always tailor your CV according to what's in the job description and make sure all the keywords that are there are also on your CV just to ensure that you pass the first round. And uh, not all the companies have started using these softwares to scan your CVs, but if you're probably looking for a remote role and the company gets, uh, so these big companies, big tech companies that um, get so many applications, um, they would try to use this uh, in the first place before going now to the second place, which is um, to be preferred by humans. And um, yeah. I think that's all it takes. So now when it comes to, so it has passed the, the machines and now it's going to the recruiter. Um, also understand that a recruiter gets so many um, CVs that they have to review. Um, but just to get a, an overview from you guys, how long do you think it takes a recruiter to review your CV for the first time? Any guesses, any ideas? Five seconds, less than 60 seconds, uh, 15 seconds. Yeah, I think you're all, you're all correct. Uh, in short, very few uh, minutes, and that's for the first time because they're trying to look at exactly uh, the specific keywords that they're looking for. So that's why it's always important um, to highlight, to ensure that all the keywords that were on the job description are exactly on your CV. So that's what they're looking for because they haven't met any one of you and they just want to see, okay, is this, uh, is what I'm looking for here? If not, um, so you may have the skills, you may be the perfect person for that role, but if you don't write out exactly your skills and um, what the recruiter is looking for on your CV, um, they might pass because you have not well communicated uh, or presented yourself on the CV. Um, so yeah, it takes an average of 10 to 30 seconds for the first time before they actually go into details um, so for the few select, the last few select, that's when they go into details exactly. So a CV is really significant and it should not be taken lightly. So 
understanding exactly how to write your CV would be um, great. So one of the things that um, you need to ensure also when writing a CV is for you to ensure that you're showing the value that you're going to bring into that company. So um, before someone hires you, they're thinking about putting or investing in you, putting money in you. So they're going to see how exactly are you going to um, sort of pay back what uh, they've invested in you. So this value, as you yourself, you're offering like a service, it could come in terms of uh, the experience you've had. Maybe you've worked on a similar project, or maybe you've used similar tools that they're currently using, or maybe a certain skill, or maybe you have a certain background from an education. Um, yeah, so these are some of the things that they will be looking for, and that shows the value. So that's why it's important for you to um, really express or craft the way you write your roles and responsibilities and also achievements that you had in uh, your previous workplaces. So, yeah, successful job seekers understand the unique combination of both experience. So you could have experience, but you have not shown exactly. Um, so maybe you worked for a certain company for like five years, but you have not shown on your CV exactly how or what kind of impact you had throughout the five years. So you could have used certain tools, you could have done a lot of, a number of things uh, that are great, but if you don't express exactly the achievements that you made, the skills that you gained, or yeah, just exactly articulate uh, the value to your employers, that would be a bit hard. And we're going to look at some of the ways uh, of which you can articulate this value to your employers. Um, yeah, so let's go back to the basics first before we go into that. So basically the first number of thing, the first thing your CV needs to have is contact information that's well written, make sure it's well proofread. Uh, so that includes your name, uh, your contact, maybe your phone number or your email, uh, address is optional, but it's always uh, nice to add where you are currently located. So if it's in Ethiopia or Adi yeah, or Addis, um, yeah, it's important to also add your address where you are. Um, the other thing is to add a link to your portfolio pages. So a portfolio is basically, I think if you, if you stick around up to the end of the training, you're going to get uh, some sessions on also how to build your portfolio. And basically a portfolio just involves or entails um, a list of the projects you've done and links to the project and also a little bit about uh, your information, skills, um education experience so it's a more comprehensive um it's like a, it's like a website but it's more comprehensive than uh, a cv uh so also if you are looking for uh, a job in tech um a github profile if it's a technical role a github profile is always uh, very nice to have um, also a medium profile just to show the projects that you've done. So even for the project that you've currently done on week zero, if you maybe write a report about it later and then post it on medium or on any other place, maybe LinkedIn, uh, it would be nice to also have it on your CV. Um, and also your LinkedIn account. So these are the very most important things to have. And also on a LinkedIn account, it would be very advisable if you would, um, yeah, also. So I think throughout the throughout our time here at Tan Academy, we're also going to have specific weeks dedicated for the portfolio, um, GitHub creation and how to edit it well. 
uh, also Medium and LinkedIn, editing and optimizing your LinkedIn account very well. Um, so a photo is sometimes very optional. So depending on just how you feel, you may choose to add it or not. And if in case you choose to add a photo, make sure it's a very clear, professional um, passport photo. Uh, yeah. So the other thing that's very important, um, all of these things, all these key informations will be um, added to there's a document that we will share it's the challenge document actually that contains all of those things and in detail so um, no need to maybe write it down just uh, pay attention now and then uh, you'll have all of this in the document and they'll guide you exactly on creating it so the next very most important thing to have is a professional summary and mostly during the first time when the human is going through your cv um they're mostly going to look out for the professional summary so instead of going through the whole of cv they're just going to if you have a professional summary that adequately summarizes who you are your skills uh, your strongest skills and the value that you would bring to a company um yeah, that's the one thing they're going to look for. So if they're hiring a data engineer, they're probably going to look uh, to just look for something like ELT pipelines or databases, Python, SQL, uh, all those things. They have specific keywords that need to be there on their on the job description for a data engineer. So uh, the summary is normally not it should not be too much it should also not be too um too little so a 50 word is sort of the optimum one that's recommended and yeah so this is just a brief description of who you are uh, your skills and also a little bit about the tools that you're very familiar with so within this 50 word summary a recruiter would be able to see um the track that you're on. So this could be um, a data engineer, software engineer, a gen AI engineer, and then the very relevant keywords that they're going to look for. Um, yeah. So again, this is also in relation to your in relation to your skills that you have, and also what you're able to do well. So is it HR, is it project management, um, things like that. Um, yeah, and also, yeah, what you, yeah, so also um, what you're familiar enough to work with. So that's the tools or platforms. So it could be you're good at databases, specifically Postgres, um, things like that um so also try to uh, ensure that your cv sounds more like a professional as opposed to a student um so avoid using certain words like um yes you might be a junior but uh it's so some certain uh let me not call them negative keywords um but some certain things that could just come off as you're not so confident in yourself or in your skills so yeah words like um yeah they kind of have a negative impact on your cv or trying to be this instead of you're already that um yeah certain words um so Aside from the professional summary, you are also required to list all your technical skills that you have. So this, yeah, so again, this is for your, this is for the recruiter to just see um, the kind of all a comprehensive list of skills or what you can do exactly so if it's project planning can you use trello or notion or asana if it's databases what kind of uh, databases do you use um yeah so some 
something of the sort. So I'm sure you've listed all your technical skills well. Uh, the other thing is to have a work experience. And so this should be relevant. And when we say relevant, uh, you don't want to tell the recruiter all the things that you've ever done uh, that are not very relatable to the current role. They're just going to look at the things that they think uh, you already have the experience and it's going to help the company. So one of the things, um, so again, so when explaining or when, when describing your work experience, um, when explaining your work experience, there are certain frameworks that can help us, um, that can help us, uh, they kind of guide us on how to write our work experience. So when we talk about our work experience, you're talking about what role did you have at a certain company that needs to be very clear? What kind of things um, or responsibilities were you up, were you, were you doing at that role? And also, what did you achieve? Did you make any kind of impact in a company while working uh, there? So um, ensure you also add, ensure you've showcased value. Um, so sometimes there's always this discussion about um, exaggerating your work experience. Uh, not not really exaggerating, but you're kind of stating exactly the kind of um, impact that you had on the company. So uh, one of the things, let me just share this other side. I think I'll also add this link here. Just a minute. Um, yeah, here. Yeah. So I hope you can see this other uh, side of the screen. Okay, so this is just an article that um, describes, uh, it's from, it's just an article that describes how or using the XYZ formula on your resume to improve the odds of getting hired. This is specifically for Google, but I thought it's also very helpful. And one of the things it says is uh, use the X by Y by Z formula. So this is, um, it's it was designed by this guy, that's the book, but the main thing that you should see is here. So it's so. How exactly are you going to articulate your experience? So pay attention to how you are articulating your experience, and how exactly do you do that? So it describes this as you accomplished X. Okay, yes, you accomplished this, but how exactly was it measured? It was measured by the number of sales you made, maybe, or the if you streamlined operations or if you helped if you built a system that can help someone save more time uh, you can also exactly understand how do we measure this impact that you had and exactly how did you do it so uh, try to uh, this will require you to just go sit down and have a moment to just think about your experience well and think about what you accomplished and how exactly can you measure your accomplishments and how exactly did you do this? Um, but just, to, yeah, so just to remember, shorten it as X, Y, Z. So this means that you want to focus on accomplishments, um, quantitative results and the impact uh, that you had as a result. So uh, let's look at an example here. So imagine an applicant who wants to make clear that he or she is a member of a prestigious group. Here's an okay way and a better way and a best way to describe it. So this is all in 
how exactly do you describe your experience to make you stand out? Um, so an okay way would be, I was just a member of the leadership of Tomorrow Society. Okay, a better way to express this is selected as one of the 275 for this 12 month professional development program for high achieving diverse talent. That's a better way to say it. The best way to express this is selected as one of the 275 participants. Sorry, if there's some background noise, um, there's a construction happening uh, around. I'm sorry about that. Um, so yeah, the best way to describe this is selected as one of the 275 participants nationwide for this 12 month professional development program for high achieving diverse talent based on leadership potential and academic success. So in a way, someone might say that you're exaggerating what you're doing, or but you're basically just selling yourself and you're adding more facts and um, statistics to yourself. So this is what they mean by when they say, because um, picture this, so you are also going to work for that company and you're also going to try to sell what the company does in itself. So this, when they see that you're also very good at selling yourself, that means you can also sell the company's products in the reports that you write or in the things that you do. So yeah, so this is just a, a good way to express, to write how you, um, how to, a good way to, right to experience. Um, I'll link this document on, um, let me, I'm sorry, is the noise, is the background noise too noisy or can you hear me well? Just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me well. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so I have added a link to, um, yeah, I've added a link to that. Yes. Yes, Ebenezer. Okay, it dropped again. Okay, thanks. Uh, so yeah, I've added a link to that document. You can go through it. Um, but yeah, the main thing, the main takeaway here is um, expressing the value of the work that you've done. Even if little, how exactly can you describe your work experience to show value to the recruiter? Uh, so the other thing or a component that you should also have is your education and it should be very relevant very relevant education <clears throat> and also in a reverse or chronological order so uh, there's no need to include your high school or primary education because i think we're all past that now from university or certifications that you've done or a diploma all those things i think would be more relevant to your current work um, and also if you have relevant coursework or trainings, um, that's also something that you should consider adding. And yeah, your graduation dates, and if you had good grades, add them. If you didn't have really good grades in uh, campus, there's no need to add them, or unless it's required by the company. Um, yeah, I don't think there's much to say here, but also under education, it's important to list um, some very certain specific things that uh, could be very important to the workplace. So for example, you're um, applying for a software engineering role, but you did something, so you had a background in university for let's say mechanical engineering, and you sort of taught yourself how to code and things like that. It's important to also add things like, cause I know, think, so maybe you, you did some units on statistics and math related things. Um, 
if you see maths, the, the statistics unit is very relevant to the software engineering uh, role. So it's important for you to also list that on, um, yeah, it's important for you to list that under your educational background or the relevant skills that you got from your education. Um, the other things that are optional, but also nice. Yes, someone speaking. Okay. Other things that are maybe optional, but nice to have is the license and certifications. So maybe uh, the Microsoft uh, certifications that you do or AWS courses that you do, Udemy, uh, uh, all those, uh, once you do all those online courses, it's very, also very nice to have. You'll come out as, and if you don't have any other certifications, it's important for you to start looking for those uh, licenses as well, or certifications. And this is also a very good first step here at an academy because I know you'll get a certification afterwards. Um, that's also good to add it to your CV once you have it. The other thing is, yeah, so make sure that the certifications are also in a chronological order. And another thing I wanted to say is on licensing and certification, uh, the more you have these certifications, it shows the recruiter how much, um, how much willing or yeah, how much willing or the drive that you have to learn or the initiatives that you yourself take to grow yourself and get more skills and knowledge. Um, yeah, but basically the things, so for each certificate or license, you can probably just add a link on your CV that directs to the certification that you received. Um, and this could lead to like maybe a Google Drive, upload it to Google Drive and then add that link to your CV and hyperlink it. Um, yeah, but the CV should be uh, very authentic and should have like your full name and the issuing organization and the date you and location and all those things, which I think are always included on the certification. Um, so the other optional, components to have on a CV, but also very, very nice to have is projects, uh, especially if you're in tech related roles. Um, people, it's easy for you to say you can do this, but if you don't have anything to show for it, um, it's not going to look so good. Um, so uh, yeah, so one of the things, it's important for you to uh, document your projects, maybe show links to where you've executed this project on GitHub. If you have posted, uh, if you've hosted a live website, also very, very good to add it also on the CV. Um, yeah, anything that can just show that you've done this project well and you did it well, it's very good to have. Uh, the last thing or yeah, second last thing to have is formatting. Very, very important. Um, and sometimes people tend to overlook formatting, but it's it doesn't look good if you have different font sizes or different font types and things are not well aligned on your document. That just shows the recruiter that you're not a very well organized person. So you need to uh, have a very uh, clean and nice format. Um, the format, the, the format, uh, what do we call them? The format for the font type and size and everything should be kind of equal. Uh, understand the difference between the topics, subheadlines, and how exactly you structure them. You can find very good templates on Canva or even online, but also on the documents that we'll be looking at the career challenge, you'll see that we've given you a link to a certain template that you can just edit and add your skills. Um, yeah, also the, the 
style or the fonts should be very professional. Don't take no punctuations and yeah. Uh, yeah, another thing is a CV should be, if you have a lot of experience, uh, two pages is okay. If you're just a student who finished um, uni a few years ago with less experience, one page should be enough. Um, yeah, also try to utilize bullets and yeah. So the final checklist. So here under photo, I think it's always optional. We don't really need to have no photo, but it's okay if you also don't put it. Um, so also when naming your CV, uh, it should be 100% consistent across your CV, your LinkedIn and also GitHub and even Medium. So it doesn't come out as two different people. Um, yeah, so on your, if you use the name um, Abigail, Ma, I don't know, Melissa, you can, I don't know if Melissa is, yeah, so someone like Berhanu should be both on your CV, similar to your LinkedIn, similar to GitHub, just to avoid confusion for the recruiter, giving them a smooth time. Uh, all links should work and they, they should direct you to the right place. Your CV should always be saved as a PDF. Don't send it as a .docx because it's going to open in a very weird format. So ensure it's a CV and how you name it correctly for the purpose again of the recruiter. So in their uh, computers or their hardwares, they should be aware what kind of document this is. So your first and second name stroke CV dot and it should be a PDF. Uh, the other thing is to ensure that there are no spelling mistakes. So make sure you've proofread it well and also try ask one or two friends to help you out. Um, there's no issue with formatting, consistent font. Again, like we said, uh, spacing and paragraph should be equal. Uh, make sure your experience and skills are very consistent. Be clear, no logos or backgrounds and use appropriate keywords. Um, so does anyone have a question up to there? Um, one other thing that I failed to mention is, remember when we talked about the XYZ uh, formula for writing your experience, there's also another way that you can express um, your, that you can express your, that you can write your, um, your CV. So, um, let me just, so I think it's called a box law, but it's kind of similar to the XYZ rule. Mm, yeah, so, I think it's called a box law. It's kind of similar, but it has like different. Um, so yeah, let's look at a few examples. So uh, an okay, better and best. So number one is maybe, okay, this, uh, I don't think we have sororities in Africa. It's kind of irrelevant. Okay, let's go to a college student participating in a leadership program. So you're a member of this or selected as this and also adding this and the other thing. So also this is also linked, but it's still similar. So let me just add this to the document. So, um, yeah, on, we're almost getting done with the class. So we'll just go through the Paris document and that's on preparing a CV. So this is a very 
good document um, in a way that it's like your personal assistant for writing your CV. So you can always save this document and come back to it even in the next five or 10 years. And if you just need guidance on how to write a good CV. So yeah, it just gives a basic description and also what it needs, what needs to be on your CV. So it's like a checklist. So you need to have your name, your contact details, experience, how to write a good experience um your education your licensing and skills and then so yeah um i think yeah that's the exercise so for the exercise you are required to uh, i'm sure you all have cvs at the moment so just review your current cv and see if by any way you can improve the content. And here's a template that I mentioned that can guide you when uh, writing a CV. Uh, yeah, so your full name, uh, contacts, the professional summary, skills, technical and software tools and job description, projects and education. Uh, if you're confused on how to, on a template, uh, use this. If you already had an original CV that you feel like the template is okay, um, then just edit whatever you have. Um, yeah, just go through the whole document and improve it here. And then basically your submission should be a CV in PDF format. And I hope you're all aware how you're going to. I hope you're all aware on um, how and where to submit. Can you give a Can you give me a thumbs up if you're aware? Okay. So another thing. Do you all have access to this document? Okay. Um, I think maybe I missed some emails. Um, okay. Um, I'm also going to share this link on the Slack channel. Um, okay, so we're going to go through, I'm going to post it on Slack as well, so you don't miss it. Uh, just a minute. And if you also don't have access, since I also don't think I have access to change. Um, so yeah, on week zero, you have the document and also the slides. So if you don't have access, please reply on that thread on Slack with your email. And yeah, we, the content manager will be able to add you there. Um, my view on Europass, I think it's also a good way and a good guide to um, writing your CV, uh, but it's, it, yeah, it's really good, especially if you're applying for, um, if you're trying to find the 
jobs if you're trying to find work in the EU. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for a remote role in the EU, uh, Europe or CV, you can also use that. Um, you can also use that format because I'm guessing also the softwares or the ATS machines that proofread your CV are also trained on the Europass data in the EU. My thoughts, never had an experience with one of them, but yeah, I think it's also a good one. Um, okay, so for the ones who are seeing the CV or the documents are not accessible, I have copied and I've pasted the link on Slack all week zero. So if you have no access under that, please reply with your email. Uh, so Makida can add your emails. I wish I could change the settings, but I don't think I have the permission to. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's it. In the meantime, uh, I will, I'll edit, I'll share this and yeah. Why not just download and send it on Slack? Okay, I can also do that. Um, sure, thanks for that idea. Um, otherwise, I think that's 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 all for today. Um, have a great rest of your day and your evening, and all the best with this. Yeah, all the best with the training. And congratulations also for being here. All right, bye. Thank you, have a great evening. In case you have any other question, um, you can find me at Margaret's Careers Tutors on Slack. Okay, bye.